Hey everyone, so this week what we're going to be doing is we're going to be rounding out our um, work with Python uh, to include JSON. So obviously last week what we what we did is we used Python to process a comma separated value file that was much larger than we could conveniently do with our existing tools like OpenRefine. Um, what we're going to do this week is show, now we know that we can use OpenRefine to open JSON files, which is handy, um, and we know that we can obviously use OpenRefine to open multiple files at once. Um, what we're going to do this week is we're going to just going to look at how we can use Python to parse JSON files. So it's going to be very similar in many ways to what we did with um, with the CSV data, which is that we're going to have a recipe book uh, called JSON. We're going to import that, and then we're going to use methods from that in order to access parts of our JSON. But the really uh, the thing that I hope you'll take away from this is that actually once you kind of get past that initial part of which recipe book do I use, um, the process of kind of process loading and parsing this data is very similar. Um, the other thing that we're going to look at is um, that's a nice uh, feature that we can do whether we're looking at CSV or JSON data is that we actually don't have to manually enter the title of every single file that we need to look at, that we want to look at, right? So if I have a collection of CSV data, for example, um, data that I've collected over the course of time, or JSON data that I've collected over the course of time, um, I don't have to actually, you know, write an individual script for every single one of those. Python has a way that it can just say, look, I want you to look at every file in this folder um, and for each file do the following things. Um, so that's going to help when you are trying to look at data over time, uh, which is very often the case. Um, and then finally, we're, I'm just going to show you, this is going to be sort of just like a nice to have, um, something for you to take with you, uh, something called a shell script. It runs in, uh, in the terminal. We'll do it directly. Uh, you can actually run it uh, in the terminal just the same way we have been in Aptana. Um, but we're going to look at this shell script and uh, what this is going to do is actually let us automate the downloading of data from a URL. So to get started here you can see we're right back on our city bike um, data page but in, rather than going to the CSV files this time I'm going to come to the station uh, the station feed, right? So we've looked at this m multiple times before. Um, you know, nothing, nothing really new to see here. Although, as you know, as we've noted in the past, right, one of the things this shows us is uh, what time I loaded the data on the web page. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to download a copy of this, and to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and do a Control A or an Apple A and an Apple C, right? I'm going to open up a text edit file. Oops, text edit. Right, um, and so this is all stuff that we've done before. Um, I'm going to paste it into my text edit file. I'm going to use a shortcut or the um, format men menu to convert it to plain text. And now I'm going to just save it, and I'm going to uh, put it into the same Python work file that I've been that I've been working in. Now um, I'm going to go say, okay, so I'm going to call this city bike data JSON. Right, it's going to ask me if I want to use text. I say no, thank you very much. And now I have a copy of this file in uh, my Python uh, folder. Right, so you can see I also have some of the other stuff in here that I was working on last week. No big deal. Um, so the next thing that I'm going to do is obviously open up Town of Studio um, and navigate to the right location. So Do, do, do. So I've already, it happens that it already has my folder here, so I'm just going to click OK um, because I already had the Python work folder set up there. And now I'm going to go again, and just as before, I'm going to say new from template, Python. You can see that I didn't have to go through, I won't have to go through that configuration process again because, of course, I've already done it once uh, on this computer. Um, and I'm going to, again, do a save as and make sure that I save a um, save my file in my work folder. So just hop to the desktop here and replace my file name. But I'm going to call this one JSON, JSON processing, just for parity. And here I go. So um, just as we did the last time when we started by importing CSV, instead I'm going to start by importing JSON, right? simple, the name of the, um, it's not always going to be exactly this way, but both CSV and, and JSON are very common data types, so 
Um, they have readily available quote unquote recipe books or libraries, which is actually the programming term, we call these libraries, um, for dealing with um, for dealing with these data types. And of course, the first thing that I want to do is actually um, uh, is I'm just going to go ahead and uh, I want to open my file. So um, the way that I do this is going to be in the same way. So I'm going to have um, sort of source file equals and now in this case um, I'm going to tell the JSON specifically I'm going to start out by uh, telling the, the file specifically wh what to look for. So this is going to be exactly the same thing that we did before. I'm going to say open. I'm going to look for my file name, which in this case whoops, is, uh, I've named it citybike underscore data dot JSON. So I'm going to say citybike uh, data, oops, data dot JSON, right? I'm going to pass it my RU. Right now, in this case, I'm not going to create a a, a, um, a dict reader or use my CSV library because, of course, the data that I'm targeting is JSON, not CSV. Right. So in this case, um, I have a similar thing where I'm going to use one of the um, one of the recipes in my JSON recipe book um, to make sure that the computer understands that this is a JSON file. And to do that, I'm going to create something here that's called JSON data and the method. So I'm saying JSON, so that's JSON, the recipe book, JSON.load, okay? And then I'm going to pass it source file, okay? So very similar to what we did before. In this case, instead of saying uh, csv.dictwriter, we're saying JSON.load. That happens to be the name of the built-in of the recipe in the JSON cookbook um, that will uh, handle this. And so now I can just say, just to get a sense that this is working, I'm just going to say print JSON data. So very, very straightforward to start here. Um, I'm going to, of course, down in my terminal window here, I'm going to get into my appropriate folder and I'm going to run my file to make sure that everything is working okay. So JSON processing. And you can see that actually one of the things, so it looks kind of okay. You can see that one of the things that's coming out is everything has this U ahead of it. Um, that's actually an indicator that this is Unicode, or rather or UTF-8, okay, is the format of, um, is the format of the data file. Um, you may not have noticed that when we saved this from text edit, it had a check bar, it had a under the format thing, it said save as Unicode, as UTF-8. So I'll just demonstrate this again. If I open this with text edit, Okay, um, and I do file, I'm going to say duplicate because that's the way that it will sort of show me this save as window again, right? And I say file save. Okay, you notice that the plain text encoding is coming out as Unicode UTF-8. That is what Python needs to, in order to process this JSON data. Now, it's not something, um, I'll just get rid of that. It's not something you need to worry about. So if you're doing this process this way, you don't need to worry about it. Um, it will generally, it, if you've converted it to plain text, it will convert, it will default to UTF-8. Um, but if you ever run into errors with it, that's something to look for, is that maybe it's saved in a different quote unquote encoding, encoding. Um, uh, but plain text is what we're looking for here. So what we're gonna do now is basically just what we did the other day. Um, now, of course, if we recall our the structure of our data here. I'm going to sort of scroll back to the top here. I could obviously do this by looking at text edit, which might be a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. Probably not the most efficient way to do this. Very certainly not the most efficient way. Um, but if we remind ourselves, oh, it's not even going to show me the whole thing. Well, that was not very useful. Um, okay, so once again, I'm going to open this with text edit just to remind myself of what the features of this are. And again, if we look at the top here, uh, you may remember now that we have these two features. We have execution time, which shows me when the data was downloaded. And then we have this list called station bean list. And station bean list is the name of the list uh, inside the, uh, in the JSON document, right? We know it's a list because it starts with a square bracket that has each station as, um, as a JSON object. Um, so what we want to do is we want to, of course, loop through each of these objects, right? Loop through this, the stations. Um, and then we're going to want to pull the values out. And eventually, we'll write those to a CSV file. So you'll see that this starts to look very familiar. So what I can say, uh, so just the way that I printed the JSON data, I can test this by saying, OK, um, I want to print the JSON data. And then I want to, by the way, 
Actually, I just want to look at um, the execution time. Let me put some double quotes. Just want to look at the execution time property, right? That execution time is that one attribute that tells us when this, um, when I grabbed that file. Um, and so this is something that as we're writing our CSV, we probably want to include, right? Because otherwise we sort of lose track of that piece of information and that's going to be very important, especially when we are trying to um, collect a bunch of data over time, right? Because this is data that update, updates all the time. So now you can see it's printing it, no problem. So how am I going to loop through all of my stations? Well, it's actually pretty straightforward. I'm going to say for station in uh, JSON data station bean bean list, right? Exactly the same structure that we looked at before. We know that station bean list is a list. Uh, we checked that in the data. We know that this for in construction can be used to loop through items in a list. In this case, each item happens to represent a row. And then we're going to say, so this is where we're going to say, look, if we want a row for every uh, station, then we're going to do a uh, very similar, we're going to do basically the same thing that we did with our CSV, which is we're going to say, okay, um, I want to uh, create a row array or a row copy. Right, that's going to be empty, except in this case, the first thing that I'm going to add to it is um, the name, the execution time of the file, right, which I have right here. I can just copy this into it, right, and the remember that the execution time doesn't change. It's, it's only once per file, right, so each row is going to have the same value in here. Um, this is going to make more sense when we're actually trying to process multiple files at once. Um, with a single Python file. We want to be able to process like three or four copies of this JSON file. So we're going to do that. And then what do we want to do? Well, we know that um, for every attribute in station, right? So the station itself is a list, uh, has a list of attributes. And I can go ahead and say row, whoops, ah, I keep mistyping row array dot append right, whatever the uh, station attribute, oops, attribute, right? Now, of course, we haven't at this point yet created a, an output file to write to, so we want to be sure and do that. And again, we're going to do this in exactly the same way that we did last time, which is going to be to open a file. I'm going to say um, converted json.csv right, and specify that this is a writable file. Now in this case, I want to go back and I do want to import my CSV recipe book because I want to output this as a CSV, right? So I didn't need it to process the JSON coming in because it's JSON data. I use the JSON recipe book for that. But to output it, I want to say output writer dot, um, uh, oh, sorry, output writer equals CSV dot writer right, and I'm going to pass output file to that, right, so you'll see this is very, very similar to what we did last time, and now down here, all I have to do is say, okay, so I've done this, I've created my row array, right, this is all pretty straightforward, very, very similar to what we did last time, um, and now I'm going to say uh, output writer dot write, uh, oh, sorry, write row, row array, right, so again, very, very similar. I'm going to come back here. I'm going to close my file. So I'm going to say uh, source file close um, output file close. Again, not strictly, strictly necessary, but useful. And then um, give this a go. And you see that I still had my print statement in here. So that did that. Um, and when we come back, we're going to take a look at the file, see if it worked as we expect. Um, and then we're going to move on to seeing how we would handle running this script against just all of the files that are in a given folder, right? So again, if I have multiple files, how do I process them without having every single time to specifically write the file name? So I'll see you in just a minute.